All right, so one thing you can do is 13 millimeter bolt, 13 millimeter bolt, take your sway bar out of the way. It makes it easier to get to the rear end because what you got to do is you got to knock the races out. You need a long punch like that. And then there are two spots on the back and the front and you'll see them little notches when you look in there and you knock the race out for the inside bearing and the outside bearing. And I'll crawl under here and show you. There's the bearing I'm going to seat. But comes out. See the little notches on that side and that side? There and there. You go back to the back side and you take a big punch like this one and you put it in the notch you knock out that bearing and you go to the other side and you do this side you knock them out when you're replacing the bearings you need to replace the races too because the bearings and the races go together and if you just replace the bearing and not the race your bearing will then wear badly and uh, it can also hurt uh, the race and fail. It'll cause early failure of your bearing. You don't want that. So, always replace the race and the bearings in pairs. Don't ever just replace the, the bearing without replacing the race. So, alright. Uh, as soon as I get ready, I'll uh, show you how to knock them in. Okay, fellas. This is the first part of my rear end video. As you can see, the pinion is not in the best condition. Teeth are missing. Check out this bearing. <laughs> this was wallering around in the rear end. You can see how it got thin right here. There's a chip out of it right here. It looks deformed on the end because I had to beat it out with a, uh, my medium sledge, but because I didn't want to run a puller. And uh, you don't really need a puller if you're going to. I'm replacing this whole thing, so I don't really need a puller. Here's the new bearings. This is the new inner. This is this one right here. The one in my hand replaces that one. I've got a new pinion, crushed sleeve. Here's the other bearing and race. I'm replacing both. But this will fit over sort of like that. This should slide all the way down on that crushed sleeve. It doesn't, which is another problem this pinion has. This is the result of some jackass... Uh, deciding that they wanted to put the rear end together and not do it correctly. So they welded it together to make a quick, dirty fix. Because uh, apparently my Cobra was being run down fucking drag strips for a while. And when they realized they couldn't do anything more to the motor except supercharge it, because the first gen fucking modular engines really, unless you're going to replace... The heads and the upper end, lower intake, and all that stuff. There's not a whole lot you could do with them, and there's only one supercharger that really fits them. So it's pretty inexpensive. You're dumping about four grand to go faster right off the back, and you're not really gaining a whole lot. So they posi tracked it, realized they couldn't get more horsepower out of it, so they sold it. And uh, yeah, so that's what I'm dealing with now. Okay, so. Once you get your pinion, you're going to need a vise for this. You're going to need a Metabo or a grinder or whatever the fuck you want to call it. Make you a relief cut. First, just cut the cage on the bearing. Get rid of the bearing. This pinion's junk, so it's not a big deal. If you're going to reuse your pinion, you wouldn't want to do it, but cut some reliefs in it. Then all you need is a chisel. Uh, kind of fucked mine up. I'm going to have to 
I regrind this one, but and then just <clears throat> love tap it off. The reason why you got to get this off is you got to have this this shim right here. Those shims, or is there two? There should only be one. But you need these. You need these shims. You want to reuse these because those are going to help you set your depth of your pinion. So you got to have those off of there. So all you got to do is take this, uh, like mine. If it's worn out, mine's sliding right off. You should have a press for this, but you don't really need one. I'm trying to show this with minimal effort. So yeah. All right. So all you got to do is move your foot, please. Is Unless your your uh, mice sucks balls. Just take it. There you go. Now it's off. There's the old bearing in inner. And then I need this off of there because that's the shim size that needs to be behind the pinion. Make sure the pinion is lined up correctly. Okay. Okay, I hit the right button. Take the pinion out of the freezer, put your shim on it. Add this in the oven. About 400 degrees. Take the bearing out. Done. Bearing on, no press. So, there's the new race. There's the old one. And you can see some pitting on it. Right here. And then again right there's some pitting but you got to drive one in there and then one back this way for the other side and it's not fucking easy this took me about an hour to get the front one set the back one which you can see right there it set relatively easy but this front one man it was just a bitch um fun fact throw them in the freezer uh Making them colder will make them shrink up a few thousandths of an inch. And then lube both the inside and the race itself. And then you can drive it in much easier. Old one. New one. Old one. New one. Do we see a problem? I see a problem. When you get the new pinion, it'll have this black coating on it. You need to remove that. Makes it easier to put the bearing on and to get it all together. Uh, so after you've got this on, this cleaned up, you got your ring on your carrier. I'll take you over here and show you that real quick. The carrier is self-explanatory with the ring. You just put it on there. These bolts, bolt it down, torque it down, going across pattern, make sure it's tight. Then you got your carrier bolted up, you got your pinion all ready, you got your racing seal, your races in for your new bearings. You are ready to start reassembly, and I'll talk about that here in the next.